Hi, everyone. My name is Kirk Bauchman, and welcome back to The Ultimate Dish. In today's episode, I'm speaking with Ewald Natter, a master of modern-day confectionery arts, known as a celebrated competitor, eminent teacher, and esteemed author. Chef Natter was the founder and former director of education of Natter School of Pastry Arts in Orlando, Florida, and the first pastry professional inducted into the Pastry Art and Design Hall of Fame. He has worked and competed in over 15 countries, winning numerous awards, including several gold medals, as well as National and World Pastry Team Champion and Pastry Chef of the Year. As part of the 2001 U.S. National Team, he scored 699 out of 700, helping the U.S. team achieve its only gold medal to date. Ewald has been honored by the American Academy of Hospitality Sciences with the Five Diamond Award as one of the finest confectionery chefs in the world. In 2017, along with his business partner, Sarah Dowd, he opened Dote Coffee Bar, which is currently one of the most popular coffee shops in Bellevue, Washington, which is the Seattle area's tech and finance hub. Join me today as I chat with Chef Natter about the art of the confectioner, the art of the chocolatier, culinary competitions, and the future of pastry. And good morning, Chef. There he is. How are you? Good morning, Kirk. Thank you. I'm feeling well. Wonderful. Wonderful. That that was one heck of an intro. We're going to have to take all of that apart step by step. Um, to set the tone, then, you're still, after many years in Florida, you're in the beautiful state of Washington. Is that right? Yes, it's correct. I'm in the state of Washington. I'm very happy here. And finally, it started to rain after four months. When people see <laughs> rain here, they're all lucky and happy, you know. Oh Well, be careful what you wish for, because you're going to get plenty of rain. I had my years in Oregon, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so we, we, I have to say, I'm really, really delighted. Um, so good to see you. We've met a few times over the years. I'm a big, big, big fan. Ich kann ein bisschen Deutsch sprechen auch. And, uh, and so we'll, we'll get <laughs> We'll get into that. I, I, I love your social media, um, the 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 beauty of your 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 show pieces. Um, it's just absolutely fabulous. So I'd love to unpack this for everyone and and kind of go way way back. And you're you're born and raised in Switzerland. Tell sure. us a little bit about where you're from and and how you found pastry as your passion. Well, as you said, I'm born in Switzerland in Fittelsbach, close to Baden the German part of Switzerland. And as you grew up in Europe, uh, you have to make an apprenticeship, right? At the age of 14, you better decide which way you're going to go. And this was the most difficult thing for me. I couldn't decide. So my teacher advised me to do a stage in either a window decoration or carpeting or in a pastry shop. And he was right. He knew me best. And I went to a pastry shop. I did a stage for a week. And I fall in love with pastry. And mm -hmm. uh, I was so excited. I like sweets. I like to create things. And all came together. I started to do my homework again. <laughs> <laughs> Became a, a different person. As in an apprenticeship, you go one day to school a week and you work four days. So it's a, I think it's an ideal process. After three years or four years, you make a test and, you know, you move on. It was great. Yeah, my 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 father, I, I've mentioned to you, um, is is a, a Meister, um, received this Meister brief in Germany. The same same thing. He he tells me about his three year apprenticeship, and then for six years he was a journeyman, going from from shop to shop. And Correct. I'm not sure it's the same in Switzerland, but in Germany, Very similar it, is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. At the time, you to you could work in a bakery or a bake shop. But in order to own a bake shop, you had to make your Meister. Is that uh, yes. similar, yeah. similar in Switzerland? Okay. Yes. I think today you can own a shop, but you cannot have apprentices. You need to make the master test, correct? Yeah. Which is good. I think it's great to go to back to school after five, six years. And, you know, it's a good education. So, so you, you had a mentor or a counselor that suggested a few different things and you went the pastry route. Was it always pastry and always sweets, or were you tempted by the savory side as well, cuisine? No, it, none of all. You know, I grew up and, well, I, I wasn't the person who was in the kitchen with my mother or grandmother baking cakes and stuff. Oh, I was interested okay. in sport and nature. So was a lot of outside, but I was creative and I knew I, I was better in drawing than most other people in school. So 
it was perfect getting into face. It was very new and also more exciting for me. Yeah. Were there some major influences along your path other than your teachers? Were there some people, chefs that were doing just amazing pastry at the time that you looked up to? At that time, I was everything was new to me, not at the beginning, but later on, of course, right? And most influential person was maybe Vivi Pung. I took classes in sugar decoration. He was a very funny, open-hearted person, spontaneous. Maybe mm. not the cleanest, but, you know, <laughs> right to the point. And he took me under his wing. So I worked with him for two years after, every evening from five to nine and wow. I learned a lot and we experienced a lot. It was, it was a great time. So he was one of my mentors, right? And later on, I met, funny, I met Gabriel Payasson. I competed against him. He's the founder of the Coupe du Monde. And when I saw his ribbons and his showpiece, I was so attracted. And I just, you know, I wanted to learn more, eager to do the same kind of ribbons and get the same kind of shine. And later on, if I may say, when I had the school, it was very important, it was Olivier Bajar. I had him as a guest teacher. He taught me about art, how to structure a piece, the base, the height, the color, the focus point, and so on. And maybe most creative people, maybe Stefan Triant or Stefan Leroux. So these are people I liked to be in touch, to be friends, to share, exchange. And yeah, it was it's good. It's very important to have a network of good people. Is there um, for the, for the students that will listen? They'll 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 hear about the you know pastry arts, and then they'll hear about this you know field within that field of sugar work. Is can you do one with the without the other, or was it important for you to have an incredible foundation in pastry technique first before you ventured into sugar work? Yeah, yeah, I honestly believe sugar work is not the most important and chocolate decoration either, but it goes along with it and helps to create a beefy or a table or make a customer happy. But honestly, most important is clean work, good flavors, and, you know, work, get, getting to know the techniques. The basic is most important. Once you know the basics, in is it in pastry or once you know the technique in decoration when you know how to cut out how to blow how to cast and all these things creativity comes to you yourself but if you don't know the basic you get frustrated more and more so that's important step by step and the rest will come certainly so you mentioned several mentors and and people you worked with and connected with how important is mentoring the next generation to you you've you've been a teacher you've you've run a culinary program a pastry program how important is it for you to give back to the next generation it's the most important thing and the most satisfying thing too you know and life is giving and taking you have to give to get and don't forget to give back and you know and especially in america people are very generous and they show their love to you or how you connect and definitely as a teacher, the most important thing, seeing a student getting successful or admiring what you do. Yeah, and wonderful. be always critical and open. Not always the easiest thing to criticize a piece, but you have to find the right words, the right time, and that will bring you the success, I believe. No, well said. Well said. Very humble. Obviously, you didn't just wake up one day and win a gold medal at the Coup de Man. Uh, there's a there's a lot of work behind the scenes, a, a road that is heavily traveled to receive prestigious awards. When when you think, Chef, about your journey as a pastry chef from from your apprenticeship school to working in various restaurants under various chefs, competing in elite culinary competitions then teaching and launching your own pastry uh, art school, where there's some very, very important, pivotal moments where uh, it, it, it basically defined you. Like you, you, you knew that you had arrived at what you set out to achieve. Tough question. Well, <laughs> it's a long question. So a lot of elements I would like uh, to say, but the most pivotal Moments maybe was opening the school, writing a book, or 
winning the Coupe de Monde. But it's, it's very different today than it was in the 80s and in the 90s. We needed to compete, right, to get our name out. There was no social media. So we had to compete to get the name out. Then we got invited to do demos. Demos is the most important thing to competition, before competition, because you work in a certain timeline, you work in front of people, you have to get it done. And uh, people will judge you how you come across, how clean you work, how it tastes. And that was very important. And maybe I had an advantage to other people because of that to win the competition. I was used to work in front of people, but still it's, it's, it's a lot of work. And if I may say also, when I knew I go into a certain competition like Coupe de Monde, I went there two years before. I was the dishwasher for the former team, but I got a sense of how to get there, what the judges are, what the facility, the equipment, is it humid? All this is very important. It's not just train, train, train. You have to get a sense where you're going and who is judging it. And you cannot just do what the last team did to win. You have to figure out why did they win, but you have to top it. Otherwise you won't win. And that means if you top it, you have to take risks. And then the demos come very helpful and teaching comes very helpful again, because you make mistakes all the time and you break a piece, but you have to put it back together. And if you don't have that knowledge or, you know, you don't bring it with you, you don't believe in yourself, it's easy to fail. Not that I'm better than anybody else, but I had a lot of, uh, I had a good team around me and coached me and I could ask for advice and you all made it happen. But it doesn't mean you need to win, you know, just going there and put everything you have in it. People say, oh, it was fun. Hell, what was it fun? It was not fun. <laughs> it was hard work. If I want to have fun, I play soccer, I go to the beach. But yeah. the competition is hard work, right? And because you don't want to make a fool out of yourself and you want to make the sponsors proud of you. And so that's a whole process. But that's what I had in my mind and how I worked. Yeah. It, it, it's one, wonderfully said. You, you mentioned something right before this earlier. You You mentioned to make the customers happy. Um, this yeah. is a question I like to to talk about with many hospitality professionals and teachers, this idea that that you have to love your customers. You yeah. you have to really want to try to please them. How how important has has the customer response been to you throughout your career? Oh, it's the key to success. There's no doubt about it. And it's not only myself, it's my my staff or the person in front of the coffee shop, right? Uh, she Maybe the, the person of the coffee shop is the first person the customers are greeting. The customer gets a smile. How are you today? We have this and that. We try a new recipe or we try that. You know, she is the spokesperson for you. She introduces you to the customers. And I cannot force that enough how important that person is. And the customer, they come back because of that smile. Listen, if you make a mistake, which happens all the time in the kitchen, but if the front person is nice and friendly to you, you forget about it or, you you know, it's okay. But if she doesn't please you, oh my God, uh, you know, you will not come back. But also in the kitchen, right, we do work a lot with ganaches. We flavor our, we marry basically chocolate and coffee. All the flavors in the coffee comes through the ganache. So I can make the best ganache, best mouthfeel, best flavor, but it doesn't pair me the chocolate. So I have to change it. Even if I like it, if my partner doesn't like it or the customer, I have to be strong enough and say, okay, let's try this and that. So it's a teamwork, right? But customer is the best. Uh, how you say it's the most important thing. It's the validation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really, really well said. You know, over the years, I, w- I want to come back to the hard work again. I've, I've been privileged to to speak with a number of, of gold medalists in, in competitions of all sorts. And the common theme when, when asked how to prepare for such an occasion is this idea of practice, 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 and, and respect for the craft, um, respect for the techniques, the foundations. Um, my question, Chef, is more around when when competition becomes very, very important in your life, 
what, what, any advice on how to balance life and work and competition? Um, because there's so many other people, family, friends that are counting yeah. on you, but yet you're so focused on the competition. How did you, how did you balance life with that? Well, I was lucky enough to have my own school when I did a lot of competition or lucky enough to have the right employer. It's most important that the family and the employer are with you. If you do a big competition, you need some time off, you need support, you need the right critics. Of course, practice, practice is the most important thing, but if you go the wrong way, <laughs> you can practice, you can make the piece 20 times. So you need criticism, right? And sometimes very difficult to, to absorb the criticism because you have this idea and sometimes you don't, don't want to give up when you think, oh, I spent so much time on that idea, I cannot change. So you have to be flexible, open-minded, open -minded, but still believe in yourself. And very important, you have to find out who is judging it. Why did the last piece win? What are they looking for? You have to read the rules. Many, many people fail because they didn't follow the rules, right? The most important thing, most easiest thing. So, you know, that, I, that, that, that's, that's incredible feedback. I was just going to ask about the culture and the intensity of, of pastry competitions or any competition. Um, I've competed a little bit and, and there is obviously, like you say, you, you have to do your homework. You have to uh, maybe even know the judges and 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 what they tend to be looking for. Can you speak a little bit to, ha, has it changed? You mentioned the 80s and 90s, and you had to compete at a very intense high level. There was no social media. You People need needed to discover who you are. Is it easier to to put things on social media and get <laughs> and, 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 and get that sort of following than it was 20 years ago? I think it's a different skill. It's a different skill okay. other than social okay. media. And I believe, you know, I follow social media too, right? And I follow the pieces and everything is perfect. And I'll tell you what, perfection and beauty can be boring. Very boring because it's perfect. But if you compete and you do a demo, people can read you. They can see you. They get a vibe. And that's most more important. You can't get this right through social media, but that's what it is today. I have to do it. I have to live with it. And on top of it, I think we're going in the wrong direction. You know, people make Instagrammable, right? I was invited to teach in different schools and they asked me to make a, a three foot show piece with 20 people. So it's not imp it's impossible in three days. Well, two people can work on a piece. So I, I did it, but I, I didn't go anymore because I had it. I know it's wrong because people have to work themselves and mm -hmm. not everybody is skilled, you know, all rounded or skilled in sugar or in decoration. They don't have the eye. So you have to be able to teach this person. And I think the most difficult thing is something little exciting to put on the table, Somebody, something everybody can do. See, I get more excited if I see a decoration or a flower or whatever, a small showpiece, and I think, wow, so simple. Why didn't I get that idea? Why couldn't I get that? You know, that's what excites me more than maybe a life-size horse, you know, carved out of chocolate. I mean, I respect the hand skills and the eye and, you know, whatever it takes to make that. But for me, it's not creativity. Simplicity, that's the most important thing. Putting something on the table makes the customer happy, wow, and excited. And something everybody can learn, you know. That's I, I, I love the 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 concept of uh, simplicity and yeah. and 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 the customer being happy. You know, chef, it, it, you are so respected and and known as an innovator. In, in in pastry arts, every everything from your ability to not only make artistically stunning showpieces, to your point, but pastries and desserts that uh, that literally send your taste buds to heaven. Right? It's it's magical. When when you are developing a new recipe, and it sounds like you're still developing new recipes. Yeah. What is that process like? Do you are these are these 
um, items from your imagination, or do you sometimes look to improve on other classical <laughs> recipes, for example? Well, I tell you what, I'm getting a bit confused going through the media, going through the internet or Instagram. I'm getting very confused and I think I do everything wrong. I did. So I, I, I put this aside. But innovation comes from a need, right? So when we opened the coffee shop, though, Sarah said, we have to do something different. There is 200 coffee shops in Bellevue. Oh, there's no way, you know? <laughs> How can we be different? And that's when we came out with the ganache. And uh, it was years ago, the same thing in the 80s, in the 90s, right? Uh, we did decoration that was employed by Springley. We could never say no to anything a customer wants. We were three people in a day. Then we had to do the window. We had to do orders, cakes. It was very, very stressful. So we, in the 80s, we did silicon molds already. We did stencils, all that stuff, which later on, bigger companies uh, took over and maybe made good money with it. But innovation comes from a need, right? And um, also, how shall I say, work. It's just work. The more you do something, the better you get your eye gets, the better your palate gets. It's work. The 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 term dote, I, I love that for a for the name of 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 a of a gathering place. You know, typically it it refers to being very fond of, right? I, I dote on you. Um, hey. Was that was that by design? What's the what's that? The... It was exactly the thought. I didn't yeah. understand dote. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, a lot of people come and say, "How is dote?" I said, "Dote is dote." You know what we have to explain, but you got it right. And that was the, yeah, it's a place to meet, to gather, and to joy together. That's what we want. Yeah. Yeah, I I absolutely love that. Are there are there today? We're we're talking about social media. We're talking about uh, technique. Are are there some trends in either sugar work or or pastry that you have noticed? For for example, I love the idea of of simplicity and and small small items that make your guests happy. Here at Escoffier, we spend a lot of time focusing on petit gâteau. So yeah, no. We don't spend too much time on large, large cakes. We okay. try to make it very simple so the student can achieve it, take right. it home to their families. And that's the way it is, exactly, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I thought about that. I knew that question will come up. Very difficult to say. I believe we get back to classical, maybe in a different way, maybe smaller, maybe different flavors, maybe the different look. But the classic, that's the way to go. And that's what it is today, unless... I read the social media wrong or I, I read people wrong, but whatever I see, it's back to basic, back to classic in a different twist. I am. Flavor. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. You, you know, I want, I want to talk a little bit about the school. Um, it, you know, it's one thing to be successful as you have been in, in pastry arts and competition, but you take your legacy to a whole nother level, right? If you <laughs> if you start your school, put your name on the school, and then try to teach others, what um, what was the motivation to open a pastry school, and how hard was that? All right, thank you. I want to say, what well, it doesn't matter how many medals you win or whatever, you're only as good as you are today, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> If I may go back, when I took classes with Pum, he offered me his school. After two years, he said, do you want to take over? I'm 70 years old. I said, yeah, I would love to. It was too early for me, very too early. I was 28 years old. I did it. Right? I took a credit and I did it. After one year, he came back to me and said, I'm so bored. I don't meet people. I miss that socializing. Can I get my school back? Of course, I couldn't say no. I sold him the school back. And I opened another school in Zurich. So there was Hund, and then it was Notter. And how that it came, Notter, and I competed under my name. So I didn't know anything else, right? And then I was invited, right, to America to teach. And then when I finally moved to America, I was very close with an import company, Albert Uster Import. And so we, we taught together, or I taught for them. But once you're successful, other people copy you. And what happened was a lot of companies, import companies opened, you know, they 
build up a kitchen, they invite a guest teacher and they offered classes for free for the pastry chefs, right? For the best customer. This was my bread and butter. And I felt they take away what I did for years. And so I was kind of forced to move on. And that's when we opened the pastry school in Orlando and I opened it under my name. I just didn't think any, it was very normal. Yeah. For me. And, and, and I'm, I'm interested too in, in all of your travels around the world. After the school closed, you, you focused on, on teaching in different pastry schools around the world, uh, Asia. Yeah. And this was all before you relocated to Washington to open up the business. Can you speak a little bit about, obviously you're from Switzerland and I have a good understanding of the importance of pastry in, in Germany and in Austria, France, Italy. What can you talk a little bit about pastry and the importance of pastry in Asia, for example? Well, I was very early invited to Japan in the 90s, and I couldn't believe how much they were focused on German pastries and French pastries. Oh, wow. And I thought they have so much culture, this country has so much culture. Why do they concentrate? Why do they want to make French and German pastry? I couldn't understand that, right? Later, I went to China, India, you know, all these different countries. But And then I saw when the internet came, right? Instagram and all this, you can see everything. It doesn't matter where you go, you see the same pastry everywhere, right? But earlier, it was interesting for me to work when I went into a country to teach. I didn't know what equipment they had, what kind of sugar they had. Not even the isomalt was not available. So I had to work with these people, even if we hardly could talk together, but it created a bond. You create something together, which tastes and looks good and becomes friendship for a whole life. And I always wanted to know what they, what, you know, they, what their taste palette is. And it's very interesting. And I believe it went away a little bit because of social media there everybody copies each other everybody want to make it nicer i believe it should be when you go to a certain country even if it's austria or germany or switzerland you should feel where you are by eating the pastry or eating a meal and that got lost a little bit i believe what what about sugar work uh, in other parts of the country as important as it is here and to you um, when I go back to Europe, I see less and less, of course, and it's not the most important thing anymore. Um, the reason, you know, when I started with sugar work, we were, we were talking about innovation before. We were forced to come up with different things, and mm -hmm. sugar very tricky, either it uh, crystallizes or in the words, right? At that time, I was looking for other things. I was taking a liquid fondant into sugar, make it shine more, or I heard about isomol, but I didn't know what it is. But uh, you know, Ricola, you know, Ricola, the cold drops, that's sure. all isomol. So okay. I searched and I tried to work with it, it was successful, and I took it to America. And you know, it, it, it was a success and it became in every pastry shop available. But when you ask again how important is sugar, it was very important at a certain time. Is it in Las Vegas or? You know, in New York, Los Angeles, I was very excited to put the showpiece on the table. And but today, I think time changed. It's not that much importable, important. And also, as I said before, it doesn't need a big piece. You know, who can afford to pay 100 pounds of chocolate for a showpiece? And who will give you five days time to make that piece? I think this is, the again, it's not the right way to do it. It's impressive, but it's not good for our... Uh, yeah. Sure. For, for, for students, yeah. chef that are venturing in that will listen to our chat and, and getting excited. And, 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 and we do the same here, very small uh, sure. attempts yeah. uh, at chocolate and sugar. Um, what are some of the, this is very technical. What are some of the biggest challenges? Was the humidity in Florida ever a challenge for sugar versus isomelt? Um, what about, uh, the rain in in Washington. What are, what are some of the just the, the the real simple things that students should 
should very, be prepared for. Yeah, very, very challenging, right? Very challenging. So <laughs> I hated it in Florida. It's very humid. <laughs> it rains every day. Very right? humid, yeah. So <laughs> you, you rely on air conditioning 365 okay. days okay. a year. If the air conditioning breaks down, you're done. You're <laughs> done. <laughs> but the, air, so the AC has to be working where you're going to deliver the showpiece too, right? Or yeah, the, yeah. It's you know, difficult. yeah, yeah. It's transportation is very difficult. You know, I I made my living in Zurich once from uh, orders, just doing orders. The most difficult thing there is because you have to pack it and you have to transport it and. People don't know how fragile it is. And all the, oh, is this sugar? Yeah, the sugar. Really, is this sugar? I got so tired of that question. I named the book <laughs> like that afterwards, yeah. I mean. <laughs> so that's sugar. But yeah, humidity, very, very challenging. Not only in uh, sugar, but in pastry too, right? And in chocolate as well. So you have to overcome it. But now we're inside in the office building. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. And now today you can regulate the humidity in the sure. condition but we didn't have that right you didn't but have that time, before no. what, what about altitude um here in boulder oh we're a mile um, high yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was i was in boulder i gave them as in boulder in denver and Beaver okay. Creek and you know, oh yeah yeah it, it's you forget and i got high altitude sickness however you call it i got a headache i never had in my life oh yeah oh, yeah yeah you yeah. have to boil the sugar differently so it's important when you do a demo or you're going to work there you make a test run before maybe a day before you know oh, you make sure some tests yeah. and so that saves your uh, success that saves your demo you have to do it. it's very different and yeah you're not selling shirts and you know, we yeah. do it. We work in the nature. We do pace and stuff. Oh, ab absolutely. Very you mentioned you, you mentioned your book, books, um, and I had the art of chocolatier here, but I, I think a student took it to the library. Um, my my question is, with all of this going on, um, you know, where do you find the time to put to to write books to to you know take the photography. I mean, I imagine it's a long, long process. Yeah, it was a, I can say it was kind of a problem. It never comes to the right time. And once you finish, you think you could do this and that better. You have to leave me that, right? And it, it was a time is a problem, right? And But I was asked to do it. All the, you know, I made four books, four times I was asked to do it. And yeah, I did it. And I think everybody has to admit that you always think you can do better. And that's good. So, right. Yeah, so it sure, challenges sure. you for the next time. But I, everybody else, I, I speak to other people who wrote books, they have the same thoughts, you know. And yeah, it's important. For me, it was very important to do a half an hour, an hour run in the morning or in the evening. Oh, I, okay. Free yeah. my head, right. And when I was in Orlando every year, I did the Disney marathon. It was good. And, uh, there was a different kind of life you need besides work. It's either family, sports, or you know, you do something else. Very important. What's uh, what's the most important thing that you're working on right now? Any any secret projects that uh, that you can share? Well, I'm I don't have any secrets. Never had, right? But uh, we want to open two more stores. We don't want to oh, open okay. another fifty stores or whatever. We want to get better. And we were asked again. We were asked to open two stores, and we we said yes. We didn't sign the contract yet, but that's what's going on. And of course, we have our flavor calendar. We just try to do the best we can, and you know, I, I also learned going back into production. It's very difficult <laughs> to excite a customer with a simple croissant or with a tart, right? It's easier to excite a person with a showpiece, but to make to excite a person to make the best cookie or the best uh, brownie. You know, I never made a brownie when I came here. So my partner asked me, oh, I think brownie would be would, would go very well. People are love that kind of cookie. It's simple and this. I never made one. So I called my wife and said, my partner wants to make me a brownie, you know. Said, and <laughs> even you may laugh, but I had some gelatins to keep it crusty and soft inside. And that's yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, to make now I believe I make the best brownie in Berlin. 
I yeah. believe, you know, but <laughs> it's work, right? What, what's it, it what's the theme at DOTE, right? So you, you mentioned earlier, and we didn't follow up on it, that there's hundreds, particularly in Seattle, right? I mean, yeah. the home of Starbucks and Pete's and all of that. Yeah. So so what what is the theme at DOTE um, when someone wants more than just a cup of coffee? Well, the... We, all, we have, a, of course, we have a vegan license as well, but our heart of the business are ganaches, right? That's the heart of the business. And we hardly have any special orders, but we do breakfast pastries, we do macarons, we do chocolates and tarts, and, but we don't have gattos and a few desserts, but we don't go into gattos or that. That would be too much or we don't have enough stuff for it. And it has to... You know, we have to make the money for it too. So we cannot go too wide. We have to sell every items every day. That's what, that's our goal is to be fresh every day. So we have to adjust and moderate. Yeah. But yeah. chocolate and ganache, that's the heart of our business besides coffee. And Saradad does a very good job with, with the coffee. I don't have to worry. We do both our things and we, uh, get together once a week and we discuss what's going on. So I'm, I could not be luckier. I'm very happy where I am at the moment. Yeah. It sounds like harmony, the most beautiful word in pastry <laughs> harmony. Yeah. What, um, and not to put you on the spot, but for, for, you know, we have several pastry um, students here in Boulder and Austin, and of course, taking courses online. Um, it It's, it's been incredibly popular in in the last couple of years when whenever you know a new show is on netflix or or people see exposure on 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 social media students become very very excited of, about working in the pastry field is there any advice that that you might give to someone you you yourself having gone through an apprenticeship and a journeymanship and you know all the years of work what what advice would you give to a a young culinarian that was just like Ewald in Switzerland so many years ago that, that wanted to pursue and, and looks up to you as a mentor. Yeah. Interesting questions. You may not like what I say, but I don't follow <laughs> food network at all. Okay. It's totally okay. crazy. You know, it's all about excitement and yeah, uh, this and that. And life is not like a pastry. It's not like the pastry is hard work. You have to love what you do. You have to follow a mentor. We're close to them build up a network of good friends so you can share recipes, you can share the problems you have, don't burn any bridges, and be an idol for everybody else. Even at my age, I clean the floor, I bring the trash out, you know, it's it's part of a teamwork, and it works very, very well. Yeah, no, no, the, I, I appreciate the transparency and the honesty. Um, my, my father turns 86 on Friday, and he He's still making strudel and, See? and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and it, it is about hard work, but, but if you love what you do, it, it never really feels like hard work. Right. So, and I think our students would appreciate that, that response. I truly do. See, we um, go, go ahead, John. Uh, America is, is wonderful. They're very responsive. If you like what you do, it shows in your work. The customer will like it and respond to it. They give you a smile, they write you a note, and that's all it is about life. Be recognized and, you know, it makes your life a lot easier. No, no, absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Chef, the name of our podcast is The Ultimate Dish. So this is really the the toughest question. <laughs> and you could go savory or you could go sweet. But we like to ask all of our guests what the ultimate oh dish is God. in their mind. <laughs> You're going to be so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't be. <laughs> no, whenever I go to Switzerland, I have my I have my bar. I go in there and I order a bratwurst or a salad <laughs> and a beer. It's a piece of bread, and that's all I need. It brings me back to my, you know, childhood. That that flavor and that's all it is. Means more to me than any um, glamorous uh, uh, dinner, you know. I, I absolutely love that answer. You're talking to a German guy here, you know, I'll sit next to you <laughs> next time I'd have a, a brat okay. worst and a beer, right? There's nothing wrong with that at all. Mit some, um, some, some good brot, right? Yeah. That's <laughs> it. The purely, that's the bread. Yeah. It has to be crusty, right? Oh my God. I had so much difficulty coming to America and eat the, uh, the bagel, right? There's no yeah. crust. <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> it took me years to love it. And now I really appreciate it, but you know, it shows, 
where you're coming from and what, what you like and how you have to change. Right? Craftsmanship. Chef, thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. I really, really appreciate it. I wish oh, yeah. you all the luck in the world in the Northwest. Thank you. Actually, <laughs> thank you very much, Kirk. This was so much fun. I really thank you for your questions and the time. Looking Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. You. We'll see. We'll see you again for sure. And thank you for listening to the Ultimate Dish Podcast brought to you by Auguste Escoffier School of Culinary Arts. Visit escoffier.edu forward slash podcast where you'll find any materials mentioned during the podcast, including notes, links, and other resources. You can also browse other episodes and subscribe.